Hi. Hey, Russ here. Hey, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I'm going to talk about my bench dogs and bench dog holes real quick. I have many times had people asking me over and over again, how in the world do you get such great fitting bench dogs in your bench dog holes? And actually, it's not that hard. And I'm going to show you some of the other ways that I do this and show you how I make my own dogs most of the time. But even store-bought, you can use those and still get a good, effective sizing of your bench dogs and your bench dog holes. So first off, a lot of them, when I make them myself, I look for wood. This is a piece of ash that I have. It's off of one of my trees out of my yard, and it's a piece of firewood. It was just uh, near the bottom of the tree, the last 12 inches of the trunk, real big tree. And I've been whittling away at this thing was really big to begin with. And I whittle away at it, chop off pieces, and cut them down to where I can get a straight grain block that's at least three and a quarter inches tall. And obviously it's got to be about this wide so that I can use that bit to drill out the, the bit and then drill out the dowel. So I lubricate the bit before I use it. Very important that you keep this lubricated so it stays cool i squirt it one time and i can get you know half a dozen or a dozen dolls out of it just watch for how when it starts getting warm again spray a little bit more especially on the inside is where you really would need to have this sprayed because your real friction is the doll rubbing the inside here so if you're getting smoke you're doing a bad thing you don't want to get this thing hot so anyway i put this in my vise and I drilled it down and this one in particular came out to about right there and I could probably even break this one off but I like to cut them off so I get a nice clean bottom square bottom and I'll take this over there and I'll show you how I cut it off to make a final dowel here so let's go ahead and let's drill this out and let me show you what it's like to drill these things so I take my drill press when I set this up this thing is cutting a pretty big hole here. The size of this hole is actually closer to an inch and a quarter, but it's cutting out a three a three quarter inch dowel. But your hole size is, is inch and a quarter. So you want to make sure you're an inch and a quarter away from the edge, especially this edge here, because of the vise. I don't want this outer fin to hit that vise as it goes down, so you got to make sure that it's inside the wood on this one here it can it can stick out the thing can come out over here no problem but you do not want this thing to hit the vise itself as it gets all the way down so this piece of wood in particular is off of there and i kind of it doesn't have to be square you just want to be able to put it in your vise and hold it straight and i cut it out to where i got the best straight grain that i could out of that board and now I'm going to take it over here and do it, but I noticed I have a hairline crack right here. And if you follow that grain all the way to the top, the hairline crack is here. So that tells me that this right through here is potentially a place where it could break along the grain. So I'm going to try to avoid that having that in my dowel when I'm done, if I can. So uh, in this particular case, I put my piece in and lock it down onto my vise so that I can hold it. Now, I drew a pencil line on here to tell where that crack line is. And I can bring my dowel in here now. And I'm going to drill down, but i got to make sure that all these fins do not stick out on this side. Because I have my vise right here. So as I get all the way down, we don't want to hit that. Same thing on this side. So uh, I'm going to be able to drill this one, it looks like, in this corner and end up with uh, that crack not being part of the dowel itself like in this one. So let's go ahead and let's drill this first one out. Normally I use shop back and everything else but I'm just going to create a mess here and we're going to drill one hole to show you how to do it. So fire up my machine, set my piece where I think I want it, slowly engage it now if I look I can see the out, outer perimeter of that hole and I know that I'm away from this edge so I should not hit my block once I really start going in it. So now I can comfortably do this. So I'm going to put this back in there, find my hole. Now, 
You just slowly just drill it down. Every now and then, pull it out, clean it out, because there's a lot of chips in there. And you want to clear the chips as much as you can, too. So I go a little way and pull it out. I have to tell you, this ash is very, very hard. So you got to take it slow and easy. And once I'm down, all the way now. But I can actually go just a hair further. I had a gap up here still. If I put this back in there, you can see i not quite all the way down. So what I'm going to do... is I'm going to set a spacer in there, put this in here and put this up into there, put the spacer in there and drop it down. And now I should be able to bottom out here so I get a maximum length on my bit, on my jowl. And I go back in here and I finish drilling. And I now bottomed out on my bit. So this thing is as long as it can possibly be. And I just do that, I can probably get at least two more out of here, it looks like. The hole can overlap into the hole area. You don't want to hit the doll, but I can bring this one pretty close and get one doll here, and I can probably get at least one more over here, maybe even two. And my crack is not in my doll. So now let's take this one. Let's go over to the uh, other area and let's, let me show you how I cut this down. Then we're going to go over a couple of fine details about how to drill your holes and things like that. Okay. So let's go over there. We'll just leave this here. We'll clean it up later. Let me put this in my pocket so I don't lose, lose it. We don't need anything else except you. So hold on. We're going to go for a little ride here. Take you out of there. And we're going to go over here. And we're going over here to near the chop saw and my mini bench here. I've already set up the stand here so I can take you. Hold on. Don't get dizzy from the height. And I'm going to plug you in. There you go. Okay. Here we are at the chop saw. Now we can take our piece. And I already marked, I already know, I measured this down with a sharp point to see where it bottomed out and you can see I'm bottoming out pretty close to the bottom so I'll be able to cut this one loose pretty easily so now we're going to take this and put it in here set it up to where I cut the end of it off and now we'll cut this off <laughs> And now, I made myself a nice little doll here that should do a lot of good work. And the beauty of it is, check it out. I happen to know that this doll fits in here very nicely now. Just the way, whoops, let's go down a little more. Let's go to this doll. And as you can see, it fits in there just perfect. Now, why does it fit in there perfect? Because... As I said before, I have one bit that everything I do, I always drill my dog holes with this bit and this bit only. All my dog holes on my mini bench here, on my regular bench here, I have dog holes around the perimeter on it. I can take this dowel and put this into a dowel hole here and it fits the same way here that it fits in the dowel hole up here. So I start off with a pretty good fit to begin with. Uh, there's ways of making your dial a little bit swell up a little bit. Keep Put some polyurethane on there every now and then and then wax it uh, to help build a layer up if it starts to wear down. Same thing with the bench dog holes. I just usually I use uh, more linseed oil uh, most of the time. 
to do these rather than polyurethane. It just depends. And then I do sometimes wax these. I don't like to wax them particularly because then they get too slick. So, but you can do this as long as you're using a consistent bit. And I made this bit and made sure that it actually matches perfectly to my doll maker. And that's why my dolls fit as well as they do. Because all my bench dog holes, wherever I take this now, it'll fit that same way in all my holes because they only are drilled with this one bit dedicated. So, now you can buy store-bought dolls and do that too. This doll in particular, I bought from a big box store. It's just a popular three-quarter inch doll. And guess what? I got lucky with this one. This one actually fits very nicely. So I can actually make dolls from this one, which I've made several dolls from this. Um, usually if I'm going to use this stuff, that's because I'm trying to make a dial much longer or I'm making something very strange. And so I need the extra length uh, rather than three inches. Most of the time, a three inch dial does the job that I have to do around the shop. And actually, the bench dog hole is what's important. And it's always the same size. So with that in mind, now I can take this and put this anywhere I want. I can even walk over to my new table on the milling table. And I can take this new bench dog, drop it in that hole, and I guarantee you that it will fit perfectly just like it does right here. So that's how you get a good fitting doll. Now, suppose you buy your dolls instead. Here's a doll that I bought that's an oak doll. And like, like happens a lot of times, it does not really fit in there. I've been actually working on this one. And I can put it in here, and you can see it's really very hard very tight to take it in and out. It's almost what I want. But what I did is I drilled a hole in the end and I put a sheetrock screw in it. It doesn't have to be centered. Then all you got to do is chuck it up in your drill like so and take your sander, sanding block. And then all you really got to do then is just work the doll until you get it sanded down to the right diameter. Once you get it fitting right, I just take a pair of pliers and take this out. And then I have a dowel. I try to make these usually five or six inches long at a time when I do them. And once they're completely sanded down and they work good, um, then I throw them in my collection. I keep boxes everywhere where I keep all my miscellaneous dowels. So you can make the dowel fit the hole. Don't make the hole fit the dowel. Always drill with the same bit every time. And that's how I make my dolls and how come they fit all my bench dog holes as well as they do. Now, don't get me wrong. You're gonna have good days and bad days. And when you have good days and bad days, you need to have this sticking around. That way when you put a dog like this in the hole, And now you gotta take it out. Sometimes I have to get brutal to take that out. I just drive it through and then drive it out with my hammer to get it out. So uh, sometimes it's a trade off using these kind of dials. They don't fit perfect every day, all the time, but they always fit. They just sometimes are a little tighter than they are others. So keep, I keep playing these around. I made this with a three quarter dial so I can just stick it into a dial hole. I trim this one down a lot right here on the end so that when it fits in the hole, it just drops in the hole. And I can also use this to drive dogs out then with if I need to. So it's a handy hammer to have around. As you saw, I have one on my Legacy over there. I have three or four of these laying around. And I just make them out of scrap wood. So that's how I manage them. I'm also working on some other ideas with my dolls of taking something like this and putting threads on the end of it. So now I can put the dowel in the hole and put a nut on the bottom side and actually take this dog and anchor it down with a nut. And this can be an attachment. So you can make jigs and all sorts of things doing this. Um, my thread making isn't the best in the world. This one got tore up pretty good. It doesn't work as well as it should. But I have a couple others that I've also done that work real well. So 
Um, you do have to, you do want good threads when you do it, and I just use a normal thread kit that you can get from uh, eBay or uh, Amazon or whatever. It's just the standard uh, maple handles and tap and die set, and they work okay. You, uh, there's lots of ways to make them, but this I think is going to be a very good idea too to put threads on the end of some of these dolls. So that's where I'm at with my dolls. Uh, like I told you before, I find lots and lots of uses for my bench dogs and my bench dog holes. I don't always use them just for bench dog holes. So, um, I think that's about it. Hopefully you now understand how I get perfectly fitting bench dogs every time. It's not that hard once you get the feel for what you got. So find the right paddle bit. I use a paddle bit because it, it clears the wood out a lot easier than a forstner bit as you're drilling through two, two and a half, three inches of, of wood. Um, you always want your bench dog holes, wherever you put them, you kind of want them to be at least an inch and a half thick. This table is an inch and three quarters inches thick. Uh, this table is two and a quarter inches thick around the perimeter. So I get a nice beefy area for the dowel to rest in to give you a lot of strength from that dowel. Um, so that's the other thing. A three quarter inch piece of plywood with dog holes doesn't work as good as a half inch and a half piece of plywood with dowel holes in it. So keep that in mind too is the thickness of your dog hole uh, can make a difference in the quality of fit and the quality of, of uh, how sturdy that dog hole is for a bench dog depending on what you're doing. So, um, I guess now I'm done. I thank you for stopping by. If you have any comments or any questions, leave them below. I'll try to answer them. Um, if you like this video, please say so. But most importantly, come back again because there's going to be lots more before we're done. Thanks for stopping by. See you soon.